mild, non-psychotic depression with predominant anxiety is called a. Endogenomorphic depression b. Bipolar disorder c. Chronic depression d. Dysthymia e. Anxiety disorder The answer is d. Dysthymia is a reactive non-psychotic depression of mild to moderate intensity with predominant anxiety. 25% of dysthymic patients never attain complete recovery. Bipolar disorder is defined as a mood disorder in which the patient exhibits both manic and depressive episodes. In most cases, patients show dramatic abnormalities in psychometer activity and somatic rhythms. The most consistent computer tomography, CT, and magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, abnormality observed in depressive disorders is a. Cortical atrophy b. Sulcal widening c. Ventricular enlargement d. Increased frequency of hyperintensities in subcortical regions e. None of the above The answer is D. The most consistent abnormality observed in the depressive disorders is increased frequency of abnormal hyperintensities in subcortical regions, especially the periventricular area, basal ganglia, and thalamus. Some depressed patients also may have reduced caudate nucleus volumes, suggesting a defect in the mesocorticolimbic system. The following situations call for a break in doctor-patient confidentiality except a. A patient with a delusional disorder thinks his boss is out to get him and threatens to kill her. b. A patient with major depressive disorder who is sexually promiscuous contracts syphilis. c. A patient with bipolar eye disorder admits he is homosexual. d. A patient with conduct disorder thrives on the sexual abuse of young children. e. A patient with schizoaffective disorder hallucinates that he can fly. The answer is C. Confidentiality is an essential ingredient of psychiatric care, because it is a prerequisite for patients willing to speak freely to therapists. There is no reason to break doctor-patient confidentiality in situations involving a patient's sexual preference. A 27-year-old patient has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Before starting this patient on lithium for mood stabilization, which of the following laboratory tests should be obtained? A. Thyroid function tests, creatinine, pregnancy test. B. Thyroid function tests, creatinine, liver function tests. C. Thyroid function tests, creatinine, complete blood count. D. Thyroid function tests, liver function tests, pregnancy test. E. Thyroid function tests, complete blood count, pregnancy test. The answer is A. Lithium is used for mood stabilization in patients with bipolar disorder. Common side effects include gastrointestinal disturbances, nephrotoxicity, hypothyroidism, tremors, acne, psoriasis flares and hair loss. Lithium is also tritogenic and has been associated with cardiac defects, so a pregnancy test is necessary before lithium therapy. Which of the following statements regarding mood disorders is false? A. One of four patients with an acute depressive episode will have recurrences throughout life. B. Approximately 15% of depressed patients eventually commit suicide. C. Incidence of depression in younger age groups is increasing. D. Manic forms of mood disorders predominate in men. Depressive disorders are more common in women. The answer is A. 3, not 1, out of 4 patients with acute depression will experience recurrences, with varying degrees of residual symptoms between episodes.
Of note, although depressive disorders are more common in women, more men than women die of suicide because of more lethal methods chosen. All of the following are vegetative disturbances of depression except a. Hypersexuality b. Anorexia c. Hypersomnia d. Insomnia e. Circadian dysregulation The answer is a. Hypersexuality is cardinal sign of mania and indicates a mixed episode of bipolar disorder in depressed patients. Increased sexual drive is considered the fifth reverse vegetative sign of melancholia, after insomnia, hypersomnia, and weight loss and anorexia. Serotonin A. Helps to regulate circadian rhythms. B. Is an important regulator of sleep, appetite, and libido. C. Stores are increased by transient stress and depleted by chronic stress. D. Permits or facilitates goal-directed motor and consummatory behavior in conjunction with norepinephrine and dopamine. E. All of the above. The answer is E. Serotoninergic neurons project from the brain stem to the cerebral cortex, hypothalamus, thalamus, basal ganglia, septum, and hippocampus. Serotonergic neurons regulate circadian rhythms, body temperature, and hypothalamic pituitary adrenocortical axis function. Which graph in figure 15.1 depicts the pattern with the best future prognosis? A. Endogenomorphic depression. B. Bipolar disorder. C. Chronic depression. D. Dysthymia. E. None of the above. The answer is A. The course of major depressive disorder, recurrent, with no antecedent dysthymic disorder, and a period of full remission between the episodes predicts the best future prognosis. This is depicted in graph A. Which of the graphs in figure 15.1 depicts the prototypical course of double depression? A. Endogenomorphic depression. B. Bipolar disorder. C. Chronic depression. D. Dysthymia. E. None of the above. The answer is D. Graph D depicts double depression, which is characterized by recurrent major depressive disorder and antecedent dysthymic disorder with no period of full remission in between the two most recent episodes. Graph A is the course of major depressive repetitive major depressive disorder, recurrent, with no episodes and full remission between episodes. Double depression is characterized by A. Two family members with major depressive disorder concurrently. B. Recurrent major depressive disorder with current symptoms twice as disabling as usual. C. Two episodes of major depressive disorder per month consistently. D. Superimposed bipolar 2 disorder and atypical depression. E. Recurrent major depressive disorder superimposed with dysthymic disorder. The answer is E. Double depression is characterized by recurrent major depressive disorder, with antecedent dysthymic disorder and no period of full remission between the two most recent episodes. This pattern is seen in approximately 20-25% to 25 of the persons with major depressive disorder. Depression and mania share which of the following symptoms? A. Psychomotor acceleration B. Low self-esteem C. Grandiosity D. Anger E. Pessimism. The answer is D. Mania typically exhibits the clinical traits that depression does not. Mania is linked to a heightened mood, a burst of creative ideas, accelerated psychomotor activity, and grandiosity. Lower levels of activity, self-esteem, thinking, 
and mood are frequently seen in depression patients. The person least likely to develop major depressive disorder in his or her lifetime is a a 60-year-old man with pancreatic cancer b a 19-year-old woman who was raped three weeks ago c a 12-year-old girl mourning the death of her mother d a 10-year-old boy diagnosed with dysthymia e an identical twin of a patient with major depressive disorder who committed suicide the answer is B. Dysthymia is a childhood illness that is associated with exceptionally high incidence of bipolar disorder and depression as adults. Concordance rates for mood disorders are two to four times higher in monozygotic twins than in dizygotic twins. A risk factor for adult onset depression is parental loss before puberty. A hypomanic episode differs from a manic episode in that a hypomanic episode a lasts at least one week b lacks psychotic features c is severe d causes greater social impairment e all of the above the answer is b a hypomanic episode lacks the psychotic characteristics that are occasionally connected to mania. Both mania and hypomania are characterized by a heightened sense of self-worth, a reduced need for sleep, distractibility, intense physical and mental activity, and an excessive preoccupation with enjoyable activities. The defense mechanism most commonly used in depression is Undoing B. Sublimation C. Projection D. Introjection E. Altruism The answer is D. The ego experiences the typical sad symptoms associated with a lack of energy when the lost object is introduced into it. Energy previously constrained in depressive symptoms is released when the ego overpowers or unites with the superego, and mania supervenes with the typical symptoms of excess. Which of the following is not part of the text revision of the fourth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM-4TR, criteria for diagnosing atypical depression? A. Hypersomnia B. Leaden paralysis. C. Shortening of REM latency. D. Mood reactivity. E. Significant weight gain. The answer is C. The hallmark of mood reactivity is an uptick in mood in reaction to positive events. Atypical depression also includes other symptoms such as leaden paralysis, a heavy, leaden sensation in one's limbs and legs hypersomnia, increased appetite, and considerable weight gain. L-tryptophan A. Has been used as an adjuvant to both antidepressants and lithium. B. Has not been associated with any serious side effects. C. Is the amino acid precursor to dopamine. D. Has been used as a stimulant. E. All of the above. The answer is A. The amino acid L-tryptophan, which is the starting point for serotonin, has been linked to the eosinophilia mulgaia syndrome. Fatigue, mulgaia, breathlessness, rashes, and swelling of the extremities are some of the symptoms. There is a contamination in the production process, according to the current evidence. Which of the following is not an indicator of a good prognosis for major depressive disorder? A. Stable family functioning. B. No more than one previous hospitalization. C. A history of more than one previous depressive episode. D. Advanced age of onset. E. The absence of psychotic symptoms. The answer is C. Multiple prior depressive episodes are not indicative of a favorable prognosis for major depressive disorder.
In comparison to women, men are more likely to have a persistently impaired course. A brief hospital stay, mild episodes, and the absence of psychotic symptoms are all positive prognostic factors. Reactive depression can best be compared to a adjustment disorder b atypical depression c conduct disorder d oppositional defiant disorder e schizoaffective disorder the answer is a for many reactive depression instances adjustment disorder is a more suitable diagnosis Depression that happens as a result of a particular life experience is known as reactive depression. The majority of people can handle life setbacks with interpersonal assistance. Manic depressive and schizophrenia-like symptoms coexist in schizoaffective disease. Which of the following statements regarding rapid cycling bipolar disorder is true? A. Alcohol, stimulants, and caffeine use are risk factors. B. It is defined as at least four episodes per month. C. Hospitalization of these patients is rare. D. It is more common in men than women. E. It often responds to tricyclic antidepressants. The answer is A. Rapid cycling is characterized by at least four episodes of mania or hypomania each year, not per month. These individuals frequently require hospitalization in order to establish medication stability and compliance. The majority of antidepressants easily cause enthusiastic episodes, which exacerbates the pattern of rapid cycling. All of the following are common causes of misdiagnosis of mood disorder as schizophrenia except a. Reliance on the longitudinal rather than cross-sectional picture b. Flight of ideas perceived as loose associations c. Ascribing irritable mood to paranoid delusions d. Mistaking depressive depersonalization for schizophrenic emotional blunting e. Incomplete interepisodic recovery equated with schizophrenic defect. The answer is A. Bipolar disorder in young people can make them appear schizophrenic since they are often disorganized and psychotic. However, they don't have the same expansive and dilated feel as schizophrenia patients. Instead than focusing more on individual symptoms, the doctor should pay more attention to the pattern of symptoms. All of the following statements regarding cyclothymic disorder are true except a. Symptoms must be present for at least two years. b. It occurs at the same rate in men and women. c. Symptoms may satisfy criteria for major depression. d. It consists of hypomania alternating with depressed mood. e. Its lifetime prevalence rate is about 0.4 to 1%. The answer is C. Cyclothymia is characterized by at least two years of numerous periods, with hypomanic symptoms and numerous periods with depressive symptoms, that do not meet criteria for a major depressive episode. This disorder apparently occurs at the same rate in both men and women, but women seek treatment more often than men. The lifetime prevalence rate of cyclothymic disorder is 0.4 to 1%. Dysthymic disorder differs from major depressive disorder because in dysthymic disorder a. Depression is episodic b. The symptoms outnumber the signs c. The onset is usually late in life d. Manic episodes are common e. Has a high-grade chronicity The answer is b. Patients with dysthymic disorder say that they have always been depressed, which sets it apart from major depressive disorder. The majority of cases start in childhood or adolescence and manifest early. There is a late onset subtype that is prevalent in middle-aged and elderly people. 
psychomotor retardation is characterized by all of the following except a. Indecisiveness b. Paucity of spontaneous movements c. Poor concentration d. Reduced speech amplitude and flow e. Restlessness The answer is e. Agitation, not retardation, is characterized by restlessness, agitation, and pressured speech. Subcortical, extrapyramidal system, problems in mood disorders seem to support the centrality of dysfunction in these diseases, according to brain imaging research. Features of anhedonia may include all of the following except a. Derealization Difficulty describing or being aware of emotions. C. Inability to experience normal emotions. D. Loss of pleasure. E. Withdrawal from interests. The answer is B. One of the DSM 40R criteria for serious depression includes anhedonia. In contrast to a schizophrenic's flat effect, this lack of emotion is felt as unpleasant in and of itself. Alexithymia, which is described as the inability to express or be conscious of one's feelings or mood, is not often a component of anhedonia. The highest suicide rates are in which of the following age groups? A. Younger than age 15 years. B. 15 to 24 year olds. C. 25 to 44 year olds d 45 to 64 year olds e older than age 65 years the answer is e white males over 65 have a suicide rate that is five times greater than the general population the most typical mental diagnosis among senior suicide victims is depression Aggressive treatment can aid in stopping older people from making suicidal plans or acting on suicidal thoughts. Which of the following is the best predictor of the likelihood of attempting suicide in the future? A. Alcohol abuse. B. Gender. C. Prior suicide attempt. D. Recent divorce. E. Unemployment. The answer is C. A history of prior suicide attempts is the most reliable predictor of the chance of attempting suicide. Additional risk factors include unemployment, substance misuse, and recent divorce. Men are more likely to adopt deadly means, despite the fact that women tend to make more suicide gestures. In the differential diagnosis, the diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder should be restricted to a mixed episodes of bipolar disorder b affective psychosis with concurrent brain disease c full affective and schizophrenic symptoms simultaneously d affective psychosis superimposed on mental retardation e a contagious expansive and dilated effect the answer is C. Schizoaffective, or cycloid, psychosis should only be used to describe recurring psychoses, in which full affective and schizophrenia symptoms manifest almost simultaneously. In mood disorders, many psychotic symptoms are frequently explicative, as the patient seeks to make sense of the fundamental sensations of the affective illness. Drugs that may precipitate mania include all of the following except a. Bromocryptine b. Dazolfiram c. Isoniazid d. Propranolol e. All of the above The answer is d. Propranolol, Inderil, a beta blocker, is an antihypertensive and may actually cause depressive symptoms. Many pharmacological agents, such as bromocryptine, isoniazid, cimetidine, and dazolfiram, may precipitate mania, as can antidepressant treatment or withdrawal.
Which of the following antidepressants would not be the best choice for a patient with a history of suicidal ideation? A. Biopropion, Welbutrin. B. A monoamine oxidase inhibitor. C. A selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. D. A tricyclic antidepressant. E. Venlafaxin, FXA. The answer is D. Suicidal or impulsive people may benefit from antidepressants, but they shouldn't be combined with drugs that can be fatal in overdose. Better options include monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOIs, and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSIs. When individuals are on MAOIs, caution should be exercised to prevent the onset of a hypertensive crisis. Which of the following statements regarding electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, is false? A. ECT should be used in cases of psychotic depression only. B. Bilateral ECT is somewhat more effective than unilateral ECT. C. Retrograde memory impairment is a common side effect. D. ECT is often used for refractory mood disorders. 8 to 12 treatments are usually needed for symptomatic remission. The answer is A. ECT is useful for treating both psychotic and non-psychotic forms of depression. Although bilateral ECT appears to have more cognitive adverse effects, such as retrograde memory loss, than unilateral therapy, it is marginally more successful than the latter. Typically, it takes 8 to 12 ECT sessions to achieve symptomatic remission. Mr. M is an 87-year-old man, who six weeks after a coronary artery bypass graft that was complicated by pneumonia and renal insufficiency, was admitted to an inpatient rehabilitation service for management of physical deconditioning. A psychiatrist was consulted 10 days after admission to rule out depression in the context of persistent low appetite and energy associated with suboptimal participation in rehabilitation. Mr. M reported no prior psychiatric history. He had worked as a chemist until retirement nearly two decades earlier. Laboratory examination revealed a low hematocrit of 21 and moderately elevated blood urea nitrogen of 65. On interview. Mr. M demonstrated psychomotor slowing and bland effect. He denied depression, hopelessness, worthlessness, and suicidal ideation. He expressed a desire to recover from his debilitated state, but acknowledged uncertainty that he was capable of doing so. He also complained of extreme weakness. He stated, I just don't seem to have an appetite anymore. Cognition largely was intact there was mild short-term memory deficit. The most likely diagnosis in this patient is A. Anxiety disorder with depressed mood B. Delirium C. Dementia D. Major depressive disorder E. Mood disorder secondary to a general medical condition The answer is E. Following a prolonged hospital stay, many patients exhibit reclusive behavior, anorexia, and exhaustion. Aging-related mild short-term memory impairments are common. Patients who have been diagnosed with an anxiety illness and a depressed mood typically display tension, phobias, and panic attacks as signs of anxiety states. A 19-year-old single woman presented with the chief complaint that all men are bastards. Since her early teens, with the onset of her menses, she had complained of extreme variability in her moods on a nearly daily basis, irritability with hostile outbursts was her main effect. Although more protracted hypersomnic depressions with multiple overdoses and wrist slashings had led to at least three hospitalizations. She also had migraineous headaches that, according to her mother, had motivated at least one of those overdoses. Despite her tempestuous and suicidal moods that led to these hospitalizations, she complained of inner emptiness and a bottomless void. She had used heroin, alcohol, and stimulants to overcome this troubling symptom. 
she said that she was mentally disturbed because of a series of stepfathers who had all forced oral rape on her when she was between 11 and 15 years of age. She subsequently became sexually involved with any man that she met in bars, no longer knowing whether she was a prostitute or a nice little girl. On two occasions, she had inflicted cigarette burns inside her vagina to feel something. She had also engaged in a brief lesbian relationship that ultimately left her emptier and guilt-ridden, nonetheless. She now believed that she should burn in hell because she could not get rid of obsessing about the excitement of mutual cunnilingus with her much older female partner. The patient was given phnelzine, Nardil, eventually increased to 75 mg per day, at which point the mother described her as the sweet daughter she was before age 13. At her next premenstrual phase, the patient developed insomnia, ran away from home at night, started dancing like a go-go girl, met an incredibly handsome man of 45 years of age and had a clandestine marriage to him. Other than a mood disorder, this patient also shows signs of a. an anxiety disorder b. schizophrenia c. Borderline Personality Disorder D. Schizoaffective Disorder E. None of the above The answer is C. Even when a patient has been diagnosed with a mental disorder, the complaint about antidepressants' lackluster effectiveness is common. These patients typically have bipolar 2-like affective problems. The use of personality disorder diagnosis may result in the ignoring, or, maybe, ineffective treatment of the mood condition. Lam Origini recently demonstrated promise for these patients. A 35-year-old woman has just been diagnosed with major depressive disorder. For the past eight months, she has had a depressed mood, decreased energy and concentration and loss of interest in previously enjoyed activities. Although she never attempted suicide, she acknowledges that she thought she would probably jump off a local bridge if she ever had the chance. She denies any history of excessively elevated moods. You decide to start her on antidepressant therapy. Two weeks later, this patient is at greatest risk for Extrapyramidal symptoms B. Hypomanic episode C. Manic episode D. Medication non-compliance E. Suicide completion The answer is E. Nothing in the patient's past suggests that bipolar illness would be a more suitable diagnosis. Extrapyramidal effects result from the typical usage of antipsychotics, not from the use of antidepressants. In patients with schizophrenia and other diseases with limited insight, noncompliance is a primary cause of morbidity. A 57-year-old woman presents to you after being diagnosed with major depressive disorder. She has been depressed ever since the death of her husband two years earlier. She has been taking the same antidepressant since her diagnosis one year ago, with no relief of her symptoms. She states that she would like your help in ending her life. The best option for your next step is A. Respect the patient's wishes because she is of sound mind. B. Seek to more adequately treat her depression. C. Seek family members to make a more informed decision. D. Contact the Hospital Ethics Committee. E. Obtain information from the state regarding physician-assisted suicide laws. The answer is B. Many people who ask for death are depressed and would probably benefit from counseling, medication, or both. Active depression can be viewed as a state of incompetence, rendering patients incapable of coming to their own educated conclusions. The best course of action in this situation is to treat the patient's depression. Ms. S., a 24-year-old woman, is brought for a psychiatric consultation by her mother who complains of bizarre behavior. 
One month ago, Miss S was fired from her job at a local bookstore because of frequently arriving late and not performing her duties adequately. She states that she fell in love with another employee and tried to get his attention and spend time with him even though he seemed uninterested. Over the past three months, she increased her use of alcohol and marijuana to three beers and two to three joints per day. Her mother reports a two-week history of increased energy, eating little, talking a great deal, and interrupting others frequently. A week ago, Miss S reported that her former work colleagues were plotting against her and attempting to control her by broadcasting thoughts into her brain. She did not sleep the previous two nights. Miss S has no significant psychiatric or medical history. She takes no medications. Physical examination reveals a blood pressure of 135 over 75 millimeters of mercury, heart rate of 84 beats per minute, and temperature of 37 degrees. Her conjunctivae are pink, and her pupils are equal, 3 millimeters, and reactive to light. Deep tendon reflexes are normal throughout. Urine toxicology reveals the presence of cannabinoids. On mental status testing, her mood is euphoric. Her speech is pressured, and she is emotionally labile and irritable. Her thinking is illogical and disorganized. She denies hallucinations. She is alert and oriented to person, place, and time. Immediate recall and recent and remote memory are intact. She is preoccupied by thoughts of the co-worker with whom she has fallen in love. Miss S is admitted to a psychiatric unit, and treatment is initiated with haloperidol. 10 mg per day, which is increased to 20 mg per day on day 5 because of continued agitation. On day 6, she becomes withdrawn and uncommunicative. She is diffusely rigid with a temperature of 39 degrees. Her white blood count is 14,300 and her creatinine phosphokinase is 2,100. Several blood cultures are negative. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis at the time of admission? A. Bipolar disorder. B. Delusional disorder, erotomanic type. C. Marijuana-induced psychotic disorder. D. Schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type. E. Schizophrenia. The answer is A. The patient initially exhibits unpredictable conduct and impaired judgment, which are followed by increased vigor, hurried speech, mood swings, and a diminished need for sleep. Mania also makes sense when paranoid beliefs start to appear. Bipolar disorder can be diagnosed based on a single manic episode, whether or not it is accompanied by substantial depression episodes. Which of the following is the most likely explanation for her behavior on day 6? A. Anticholinergic delirium. B. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome. C. Marijuana-induced delirium. D. Occult infection. E. Worsening psychosis. The answer is B. The expected results of leucocytosis and significantly elevated creatinine phosphokinase validate the clinical diagnosis, CPK. A neuroleptic malignant syndrome has very definitely emerged as a result of the events of days 5 and 6. Anticholinergic delirium patients tend to be agitated rather than withdrawn. Which of the following pharmacologic approaches is most appropriate on day 6? A. Increased dose of haloperidol. B. Stop haloperidol and add risperidone. C. Stop haloperidol, add bromocriptine, and seek medical consultation. D. Continue the same dose of haloperidol and add risperidone. E. Continue the same dose of haloperidol and add benztropin. The answer is C. A medical emergency that poses a risk to life is the neuroleptic malignant syndrome, NMS. Stop taking all drugs, moving to an atypical medication like risperidone won't help her. Given that the course of treatment may be complicated, 
consultation with the medical service is essential. A suicidal patient with chronic depressive disorder presents to your office very frustrated and in tears. He tells you he cannot stop thinking about ending his life because he is so depressed. You ask him if he has a plan, and he details where he could buy a handgun and where he would go to shoot himself. You fear the patient will carry out this plan because he has not had adequate control of his symptoms since his last antidepressant change one month ago. You discuss inpatient hospitalization for medication stabilization, but the patient refuses. Your next step in management of this patient would best be a. Admit the patient to the hospital anyway. b. Give the latest antidepressant more time to take effect. c. Change to another class of antidepressant. d. Try to persuade the patient to admit himself to the hospital. e. Initiate psychotherapy to discuss the reasons behind the suicidal thoughts. The answer is A. Patients who are suicidal and have explicit plans and intent, should always be treated seriously. Patients who are deemed to be too risky for outpatient therapy, must receive inpatient care. Some patients present with such intense and impending suicide ideation, that the clinician is reluctant to let them leave the clinic. A 64-year-old woman with an extensive smoking history has recently been diagnosed with small cell lung cancer. She develops a depressed mood, decreased interests, and difficulty concentrating soon thereafter because she reports she cannot stop thinking about how worthless her life has been. She eats incessantly and has gained 10 pounds in the last five weeks, she also reports increased sleep. You decide to prescribe Phnelzine for her symptoms of atypical depression. Which of the following is contraindicated in those patients taking Phnelzine? A. Valproic acid. B. Trazodone. C. Lithium. D. Fluoxetine. E. Clomipramin. The answer is D. Patients with atypical depression have been proven to respond particularly well to MAOIs. Serotonin syndrome and hypertensive crises are two significant adverse effects of MAOI medication. Hyperthermia, skeletal stiffness, and disturbed mental status are the hallmarks of serotonin syndrome. An SSRI called fluoxetine should not be used on this patient. A 28-year-old woman presents to a clinic with a chief complaint of fatigue. She states that this feeling of being tired has persisted for the past four years. She has lost 12 pounds over the past two years and admits to overeating. The patient states that she sleeps at least 11 hours per night. She denies suicidal ideation but complains about not being able to concentrate. What is the likely diagnosis? A. Generalized anxiety disorder. B. Dysthymia. C. Major depressive disorder. D. Substance abuse. E. None of the above. The answer is B. Sleep disturbances, impatience, difficulty concentrating, excessive worrying and exhaustion are symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder. Patients with major depressive illness must experience five or more symptoms for the majority of each day for two weeks. The possibility of substance abuse is a diagnosis, however it is less probable given the persistence of symptoms. Directions Each set of lettered headings below is followed by a list of phrases or statements. For each numbered phrase or statement, select A. If the item is associated with bereavement only. B. If the item is associated with depression only. C. If the item is associated with both bereavement and depression. D. If the item is associated with neither bereavement nor depression. Is perceived as normal. The answer is A. Bereavement 
Active suicidal ideation is common. The answer is B. Depression. Persons often experience guilt. The answer is C. Associated with both bereavement and depression. Persons react to the environment. The answer is A. Bereavement. Delusions of worthlessness. The answer is B. Depression. During the first one to two years following their loss, bereaved people experience a lot of depressive symptoms. Major depressive disorder is more common than sorrow for those who have active suicide thoughts. Both depression and bereavement are accompanied by feelings of guilt. Mood disorders are indicated by delusions of sin or worthlessness as well as general psychotic episodes. Directions Each set of lettered headings below is followed by a list of phrases or statements. For each numbered phrase or statement, select A. If the item is associated with clauser pin only. B. If the item is associated with imipramine only. C. If the item is associated with both clauser pin and imipramine. D. If the item is associated with neither clauser pin nor imipramine. Cardiotoxic. The answer is B. Imipramine. Causes weight gain. The answer is C. Associated with both clauser pin and imipramine. Acts as an NE partial agonist. The answer is D. Associated with neither clauser pin nor imipramine. Teratogenic. The answer is D. Associated with neither clauser pin nor imipramine. The cardiotoxicity of tricyclic antidepressants like imipramine is well known. Cardiotoxicity, which is caused by an extended cardiac conduction time, can result in a number of arrhythmias. Along with agranulocytosis, weight gain is another major side effect of clauser pin. Directions Each set of lettered headings below is followed by a list of phrases or statements. For each numbered phrase or statement, select A. If the item is associated with unipolar depression only. B. If the item is associated with bipolar 2 depression only. C. If the item is associated with both unipolar depression and bipolar 2 depression. D. If the item is associated with neither unipolar depression nor bipolar 2 depression. Never any history of acute mania. The answer is C. Associated with both unipolar depression and bipolar 2 depression. Typically has psychotic features present. The answer is D. Associated with neither unipolar depression nor bipolar 2 depression. Symptoms of hypomania are present. The answer is B. Associated with bipolar 2 depression only. Can present with atypical features. The answer is C. Associated with both unipolar depression and bipolar 2 depression. Manic depressive disorders fall into one of two categories, rigorously defined major depressive disorder without a personal or family history of mania, sometimes known as bipolar 1 disorder, or pure unipolar disorder. Only bipolar 2 disorder is characterized by hypomanic symptoms. Neither type of depression often exhibits psychotic characteristics. Directions. Each group of questions below consists of lettered headings followed by a list of numbered phrases or statements. For each numbered phrase or statement, select the one lettered heading that is most associated with it. Each lettered heading may be selected once, more than once, or not at all. A. 
Dystymic disorder. B. Neurasthenia. C. Bipolar 1 disorder. D. Cyclothymic disorder. E. Bipolar 2 disorder. F. Hypomania. Is diagnosed more in China than the rest of the world. The answer is B. Neurasthenia. Subsyndromal depression and hypomania. The answer is D. Cyclothymic disorder. Rarely progresses to manic psychosis. The answer is F. Hypomania. Insidious onset of depression dating back to childhood. The answer is A. Dystymic disorder. Manic-like symptoms do not meet full manic syndrome criteria. The answer is E. Bipolar 2 disorder. Includes a full set of mania symptoms. The answer is C. Bipolar 1 disorder. Frequent short cycles of subsyndromal mild depression and hypomania are hallmarks of cyclothymic disorder. Hypomania is characterized by a few days or longer of mild mood elevation, sharper and optimistic thinking, and heightened energy and activity levels. Bipolar 1 disorder is a disease characterized by the full spectrum of mania symptoms. Depressive and hypomanic episodes are hallmarks of bipolar 2 illness, however the manic-like symptoms that occur during these episodes may not quite match the diagnostic standards for a full manic syndrome.